Singer Garth Brooks performed the song Amazing Grace at the inauguration ceremony while wearing a pair of jeans, <laughs> which just goes to show you can take the boy out of the country, but white men will wear jeans to anything. Chris Gaines. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Who dressed him? Chris Gaines. Chris Gaines. Chris Gaines. I think so. Yeah, he needs to bring Chris Gaines back. Now, if you know who Chris Gaines is, please <laughs> tweet at Terry. <laughs> Tweet it, Derek. I love Chris Gaines as much as you do. <laughs> um, before, I mean, you knew the first and last names. Yeah. I, I would say, you know that guy, but you just... I know. it's It It will never leave my brain. He had a soul patch. He had the hair. Father. He totally tried to convince us he was a different person, and I'm here for it. Shit, he fooled me. Yeah. <laughs> But you'll have wish dollars. What's wrong with that? That's right. There is nothing wrong with wish dollars except on the Wish app, I wish it was real money. I could have used that uh, for something really good, but no, for some reason, that one doll from China decided not to come through customs. Yeah, for uh, those those of you just joining us, Tommy tried to buy a sex doll from Wish, and uh, it did not deliver. Well, for some reason, they said they were having trouble getting it through customs. Something about it coming originally from Wuhan. So, Mm -hmm. okay, right. You know know how it goes. Wuhan ain't nothing to fuck with these days. No. So, uh, yes. Welcome to TV 10 Podcast. This is episode 0351, I believe. You are correct. 351 episodes. Now, sex doll is free. With me, Tommy Milagro. And me, Bill Frost. And our sponsor this week is... All right, that would be our good friends at Ogden's Own Distillery. And uh, now here's something we should bring up. Uh, I don't know what's been going on with the pandemic, but uh, the the pipeline has been cut off. But thankfully, <laughs> thankfully, Mr. Frost is still in the fifth bunker and he was able to get... Uh, the vodka, courtesy of La Chai Girl, now known as Chola Furiosa these days. Yeah, they, uh, uh, they managed to uh, dust off a bottle had lying around of uh, the Sinful Vodka, which is uh, sort of a, got a bit of a cinnamon flavor to it, right? Oh, yeah. And we've had it before, uh, mostly when you combine the Heavenly Vodka, which is the vanilla vodka, and the Sinful Vodka, and it kind of has this nice little kind of candy cane kind of oh, yeah, to it at one time. It's lovely. So uh, what we're having here is a, a Cape Sin. This is right off the uh, fivewivesvodka.com slash drinks recipes. Mm-hmm. Uh, one ounce of sinful vodka and five ounces of cranberry juice. Uh, put it on the rocks and put a lemon, not a lemon, a lime uh, wedge on there and bam, you're good to go. See, and uh, he's uh, you can't see it right now, but uh, if you tune in on to the Teddy Bear Nanny Cams, that's for you Cubic Zirconia sponsors of the TV Tan Podcast, you will see Mr. Frost gracefully uh, sipping on it with his pinky up oh, yeah, like the, you do. The chat room is loving it. Oh, I'm glad they're enjoying all this content that we provide every single time. As we go live on air, so much content. Uh, here at TV Ten. Oh, so much content, and uh, yeah, I saw. Granted, I saw that uh, Doctor White wanted to know where uh, La Chai Girl stays. Oh, well, well uh, she is. She's in the the war rig these days. Um, yeah, she's kind of she, she, she's she's going mobile, as Pete Townsend would say. Yes, she's not. Uh, she she's is, not tied to one place. She's uh, no. she's a vagabond, a soldier of fortune, a mercenary. Mm-hmm. If you will. Yes. And, uh, of course, uh, as we called in Ogden, you know, a local. Yeah. So <laughs> nothing that new, to be honest with you. And, but, uh, uh, we, uh, had some, had some breaking news here. Breaking news for, uh, oh, you might oh, want to, uh, news? you might want to put up the, uh, the Frank Chris signal. Oh, oh no. Uh, which one? Which one? <laughs> yeah. I mean, seriously, I, uh. Well, first of all, for folks that don't know Frank Christ, he is the, 
the Grim Reaper of X96's Radio from Hell and uh, always alerts us about the tragedy of precious, precious celebrities. Yeah, I'm sure you were, I'm sure you were, you were thinking of Larry King. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Denver, yeah. you're on the air. <laughs> of course, there's him. Uh, and uh, did I... There's a uh, there's another one I have here that has just come in, but maybe uh, maybe you have another one, maybe maybe uh, I missed one. Uh, was that uh, George Sierra, formerly yes. of uh, Barney Miller? Yes, George Sierra, best known as Chano on Barney Miller or uh, Julio Fuentes on Sanford and Son. Okay, uh, yeah, I uh, it took me a while to remember this cat, but I was like. Oh shit! He was kind of a big deal. So yeah, he was a, he was a thing on seventies uh, TV. Well, and the, the thing that was always interesting about him, and I found, was reading about this in Variety uh, after he passed, he was. I mean, he was uh, literally breaking uh, the barrier for uh, Latino types. Uh, Puerto Rican man uh, in New York City, and uh, his roles were. Went from Barney Miller to Sanford and Son. He even was in All in the Family, and this is the part I love best. He was a Jewish extremist who made friends with Archie Bunker. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, apparently, from what I read, uh, his it was a one-and-done character because they killed him off in a car bomb. Uh, but, uh, you know, rather than laughter, they ended on a somber tone because, you know, the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> and uh all almost died yeah we uh we almost had a death here in a uh, jane krakowski's career uh jane krakowski of uh 30 rock ali mcbeal the unbreakable kimmy schmidt now she's hosting some uh some game show uh some singing kind of game show and she was linked with my pillow ceo mike lindell but all, yeah that was a that was a daily mail no no a daily beat with a daily beast daily mail uh daily daily it was something d- daily daily dump i don't know but uh there were uh no 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 daily derp daily that's, derp um, which by the way that's our episode title right here the daily derp the daily derp yeah well, yep okay I'll, I'll run it by the committee uh we'll, right, we'll see how right. they like it in the chat room here but all parties are denying that this is a thing <laughs> e- even even well, mike lindell is saying no, I'm not fucking her. <laughs> uh, and uh, I, I have to say, Jane Krakowski, you can do so much better. We've seen you on Unbreakable, Kimmy Schmidt. You are capable of so much. Oh better. yes, oh yes, definitely. Anyway, here's what's uh, here's what's coming up on uh, the TV box this week. Get out of the way real quick. Uh, the, January 25th, Monday, as this episode drops, uh, second season, Snowpiercer on on the TNT. <sighs> Oh, okay. And uh, things are heating up with uh, uh, with the uh, Wilford uh, and uh, Mr. The, Wilford has uh, shown up. Rebels. Sean Bean, mm-hmm. and we got another train out there. Oh, yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, that was the end of the first season. Uh, we uh, we found out it's like, oh, there's another train running on running on concurrent tracks. Oh my goodness! Yeah, so all sorts of excitement are happening now. Yeah, all right. Of course, I don't know why they've never seen each other before, but you know, that, who knows? Anyway, also uh, on Tuesday, the return of Big Sky, that uh, mystery thing on ABC. Uh, okay. You know, you know, women women going missing in Montana, like like, like they do. Yeah, uh, but then again, you're not missing too much in Montana. Yeah, so. uh, spoiler alert, Ryan Felipe. Does doesn't participate in a lot of episodes. If you were if you were thinking of checking it out because you're just a massive fan of Ryan Felipe, just know he's not around for long. I don't. That's all I'm going to say about it. Well, on the flip side, if you're uh, if you were avoiding Big Sky because of Ryan <laughs> Felipe, good news, everyone. Jump right in. Yes. And uh, on Wednesday, season two of uh, this series, I just barely became aware of. Uh, I think Mrs. Frost watched this. Bonding. It's about a twenty-something New York City grad student who moonlights as a dominatrix. This is a comedy, and uh, I've seen some of it, and it's uh, pretty goddamn funny. So we have really? a season two premiering on Netflix on Wednesday. Okay. And also, uh, Alan Tudyk is back. By the way, Alan Tudyk is one of my uh, Salt Lake Comic Con. I'm sorry, fan X. Uh, celebrity encounters. I met him in the uh, VIP room. He's, he's tiny. Like how tiny are we talking here? Shorter than me. Wow. Yeah. 
Okay, so I would be towering over him at this point. Yeah. But then again, we Germans tower over everyone. <laughs> in 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 a, in in not not a not a metaphysical way though. No, 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 no. 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 Yeah. No, Alan Tudyk plays uh an alien who has uh, landed on Earth. He's living in a small town in Denver, and he's kind of uh, weighing his uh, weighing the uh, options of, hey, do I go through with my mission to uh, destroy Earth, or do I just kind of hang out and uh, become part of the community? So wait a minute. Yeah. Wait a minute. Uh, th- this feels familiar. Somehow. You, you, are you uh, thinking this is Invader Zim? No, 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 no. The what was the show on uh, Hulu not too long ago? Um, uh, and had a similar plot uh, with aliens, and the title escapes me at the moment. By the guys that did Rick and Morty. Uh, oh yeah, Solar Opposites. That's it. That's it. Well, what is this one called? This is called Resident Alien. Okay. The difference here uh, is it's not a cartoon. Yeah, but at the same time, I feel like the people that did Rick and Morty are going to sue somebody. How <laughs> right am I? Yeah, and. Uh, didn't see this one last week. Uh, we were surprised to learn that there was a Salt and Peppa Lifetime biopic, a docudrama, surprised if you will. In who asked for it? But yeah, yeah. Well, here's here's another one uh, right up the same alley. Wendy Williams, the movie. The fuck. Yes. Uh, once again, <laughs> let me let me stress this as only uh, uh, as only Brendan Fraser as robot man would. The fucking fuck. <laughs> Yeah, Wendy Williams, uh, she uh, wrote, I think she wrote this and produces it. No, she's just produced it, but I'm sure she uh, had a lot of input on it. And uh, the woman they got to pr- portray her, Sierra Payton, is a fucking dead ringer. I thought it was Wendy Williams. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's scary. <laughs> yeah, there's two of them. Oh, no, no, no. Time to drink the genius juice. Yeah, so that's on Saturday. Drink, drink it away. Saturday on Lifetime. And also, uh, Saturday Night Live is back, and uh, John Krasinski is hosting. He was supposed to mar- host in March of 2020, but, you know, shit came up. Yeah, you know, that little COVID thing. Uh, yeah, and he had so, to go to his quiet place. Yeah, so, so uh, yeah, so he's uh, finally going to get to host, and your musical guest is Machine Gun Kelly, a rapper who I believe now is a rocker. I don't know. But uh, he's a, he's a guy who played Tommy Lee in the Motley Crue movie on Netflix. In other words, he was typecast as a douche, or he's playing a type. Either I, way, I guarantee you, he's going to have at least one scene with Pete Davidson. You know, I never thought I'd say this in my life, but here it goes. Pete Davidson, you could do so much better. There's going to be one. Be, I, the, they just reran the uh, one with Timothy Chalamet hosting and uh pete davidson and timothy chalamet did a couple of uh sketches together and they're both really good uh one of them was where they uh they both played soundcloud rappers and they were on a uh hip-hop <laughs> show uh with uh with queen latifah and uh quest love the real quest love and they were talking about Whoa. talking about you know the 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 history of hip hop <laughs> it was ridiculous really yeah <laughs> oh wow yeah look that one up it's fucking hysterical and uh, uh okay coming up on sunday this is an hbo uh docu series another one this is the lady in the dale you may not remember that in the 1970s there was a there was an upstart uh auto manufacturer uh, Elizabeth Carmichael ran this, uh, ran this company and she c- came up with a fuel efficient car called the Dale. It was a three wheeled, uh, deal. And supposedly it could get at the time it, uh, could get 70 miles to the gallon. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, but she was quite a character and, uh, obviously you don't see any, uh, you don't see these three wheel wheeled cars rolling around. So therefore something happened and, mm. uh, this is going to get to the bottom of it probably or not. It, it- it, it was Detroit. Detroit rubbed her around. Yeah. That's what it is. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's not a conspiracy, by the way. It was big Detroit that rubbed her around <laughs> big in Detroit. conjunction <laughs> with the lizard people. Yeah. It's all science, people. Yeah, I don't know if we were talking lizard people in the 70s, but it, it checks out. This all checks out, really. Could be reverse vampires. We're through the looking glass, people. <laughs> Reverse vampires. Fuck. Okay. Yeah, I went Simpsons here. 
<laughs> and uh, yeah, also this is some this is really fucking weird. I think you were going to talk about it in the on the at the sports desk, but okay. I find this really weird because I write about this network quite often at the jo- at the Jorb at cabletv.com, N- NBCSN or NBC Sports Network. They're gonna, oh, yeah. they're gonna, they're gonna shut it down, even though it's highly profitable and watch, watched by a lot of people. <laughs> they're gonna shut it down and like, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll let you complete the story in the sports report, but it's just fucking bizarre that they're, they're shutting this thing down. That's like shutting down like uh, TNT or something. This is, uh, I don't get it. Maybe, maybe you can yeah. enlighten me, and maybe we'll just go there right now. Uh, are you saying that it's Time to once again hit the music. And sports with Tommy Milagro. Go team. From the sports desk of the TV10 broadcast, we deliver to you only the sport of professional wrestling. Now with less NBC Sports Network. So some of you are going, hmm, this sounds like a thing. Or they're probably phrasing it as, this is a thing. So here's the thing here. Um, as a... Uh, as uh, Mr. Frost was uh, just filing in this report, uh, breaking news, everybody. Uh, WWE, uh, well, here's uh, what they're saying here. NBC Sports Network uh, cable station, this is on WrestlingInc.com, uh, will be shutting down and that could end up having a significant impact on WWE programming that airs on the USA Network. So NBC revealed to Sports Leaks and Partners today that uh, NBC Sports Network will be shutting down by the end of 2021. So let's get that uh, squared away. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so it's... Uh, uh, and I was saying, Sports Business Journal reports that larger properties like the NHL, the EPL, and NASCAR will likely move to the USA Network. So things like N- NBCSN's uh, Wednesday Night Hockey Series moving to the USA Network could mean a change for the week. NXT shows that air on Wednesday night and uh, other factors like NASCAR Sunday program moving to Monday nights on the USA Network due to weather delays could impact the, the weekly Raw show. Uh, but uh, USA has been favorable to Raw in recent years when it comes to potential preemptions for various events such as the Westminster Kennel Dog Show. Yeah. Uh, but... Yeah, and don't uh, don't forget uh, Peacock. They're gonna the, they're gonna push some uh, they're gonna push some stuff over to Peacock too. Right. So that as to why this is uh, uh, why they're doing this, uh, it, I've been trying to find any reason or rhyme behind this, but you know, it's uh, NBC pretty much stands for not broadcasting correctly. So <laughs> uh, I think it still uh, stands at this point. But uh, we'll be following that story as it continues to develop, to develop here, which uh, is probably a good time to mention that uh, WWE has been making uh, some news of late. This time, you know, not, uh, not controversial news for a change. So among the other things, uh, WWE Network will have what they're calling their superstar spectacle, where they're going to have their superstars wrestling in india uh, because that is a a huge oh wait i'm sorry um since we're now in a in a better uh, administration are we allowed to say huge with a y or is it just huge with the n h this time ah uh, let's revert Need to the ruling. h let's just try and forget forget all of that right okay so we're back to the h now that's yes. good to know so uh where was I? Oh, yeah. So this is huge. Wow, that feels so natural in my yeah. in my voice again. It's a huge deal for the WWE to open up to the Indian market. There are a lot of viewers out there. So there is, according to the news and rumors reports of SlamWrestling.net, which I write for, by the way. Oh, do uh, you? But then again, what can you expect with a man with an MBA? to do any less drink that's <laughs> oh oh god oh, you're all gonna get drunk here folks but uh yeah so they're gonna have that and it's going to be on tuesday on the wwe network which you can subscribe for only 9.99 not a sponsor drink up bitches all right and uh also 
other things that are uh, coming up here on the WWE Network will be uh, the Royal Rumble, which will be January 31st. Uh, we'll try to keep you up to date on that uh, once, uh, once the show gets done and over with here. Uh, we'll keep you up to date. Uh, myself and, uh, and the king, Goots, will uh, be covering that. And uh, we'll have a post-game uh, report uh, afterwards here. So stick, stick closely to that. But also out of WWE, uh, they have announced that they will be hosting WrestleMania uh, in uh, Tampa Bay. So this is take two this time. And apparently, two-night affair just like they did last year. But, you know, hopefully we'll see how that's going to work in the, in, in the time of COVID here. So nothing, uh, nothing's concrete yet, but that won't be until April. So who knows? Maybe things will be, well, about as normal as anything can get in, uh, in, in the COVID times and in ugh, Florida. But I digress. <laughs> but let's get into uh, some other news that's not... WWE, and that is Major League Wrestling. Oh yeah, they uh, they are a thing. I am writing the recaps for their show. Uh, definitely catch their latest ep- episodes. Best way to do it would be on their YouTube channel. Of course, there's Pluto TV uh, among other various platforms here. Uh, but this uh, upcoming show, uh, they're going to have uh, Richard Holiday who currently owns the IWA Caribbean uh, Championship. Uh, He's going to defend it against former WWE superstar Sabio Vega in a Caribbean strap match. So that should be interesting to tune into. And uh, also, uh, they are uh, on the uh, other side of wrestling, Dark Side of the Ring, going to be kicking off their third season here and uh, i don't know if you heard about this but uh it was uh, reported on a vice podcast thursday that uh, uh the premiere episode of dark side of the ring's third season will be focused on the career and passing of brian pillman the loose cannon okay and uh yeah, so have you uh, heard of uh, Brian Pillman, uh, Mr. Frost? Uh, I don't think so. He was a pretty big deal in the early days of w- WCW. He uh, uh, even did a tag team with Steve Austin at one point. And then he uh, he was cut from uh, WCW, then went to ECW, and then to WWE, and was going for a loose cannon sort of uh, persona. And he was supposed to have a match with uh, then Gold Dust, uh, now Dustin Rhodes. Uh, but uh, before they could do that match, he passed away at the age of 35 in his hotel room. Hmm. So definitely going to be very interesting. Also, the 14 episode run of Dark Side of the Ring will kick off uh, some point this year with focuses on the Dynamite Kid, Grizzly Smith, who is the uh, father of. Jake the Snake Roberts, XPW, and the WCW New Japan Pro Wrestling Show in North Korea. I've never heard of this, but that definitely sounds like that could be worth uh, watching. So stay tuned for that, kids. And then finally this. Um, this, uh, this, uh, this story, I have to give credit to, uh, to Raul Montemayor. Uh, apparently he's out in McAllen, Texas, and sometimes he reports for uh, and focuses on Formula One racing for uh, very important sports. But uh, he did mention this to me. Uh, apparently, uh, in the in the sport of uh, of lucha libre down in Mexico, and this is from uh, Vice once again. Which, by the way, Vice, uh, look me up here. I'm cheap. <laughs> anyway, uh, it says here politics may uh, be about to get a bit rougher in Mexico City because on January 15th, uh, three, masked Mex- uh, three masked wrestlers or luchadors announced they are planning to run for local office in three neighboring municipalities in the nation's capital. And uh, Blue Damon Jr., arguably the most famous active luchador 
in Mexico said that he saw some similarities between battling in the ring and battling in the government. You have to luchar, he said, using a Spanish word with a variety of meanings like to fight, to strive, and to struggle, and also serves as the etymology for luchador. So Blue Damon Jr. is running for, uh, for officer, as are Caristico and Tinieblas. And if you're wondering who Tinieblas is, is uh, he's basically uh, a luchador that has no face whatsoever. So he's the Spanish equivalent of the Mandalorian. Oh, Easiest all right. way I can explain that. Okay. But, uh, yeah, so I will say uh, congratulations. I, I uh, uh, hope they can get through and uh, break through to the politics side of things. It's going to be a little hard because they would have to give up the masks. So if they're going to run with the masks, it remains to be seen. But we will follow that and all of that politics because... It's not the New Orange Order anymore, thank fucking Christ. It's sports. It's sports. So tell me, Milagro, go team. Oh, <sighs> uh, yeah. So it, much sports. Yeah, Here, here's another little piece of breaking news. Uh, oh, oh, more breaking news. Okay. Well, I don't know, I'm not sure how breaking this is. Uh, is Dave, it breaking bad? Dave Chappelle has canceled some shows because he uh, oh. tested positive for the COVID. Yeah, I heard about First that. First of all, so. why why is why is Dave Chappelle on the road? He doesn't need the money. Why why is he doing this? Well, and that's the weird thing too because I remember he was doing some shows near his home in in uh, Ohio. So, yeah, I'm like you. Why does he need to do this? Plus, don't know. He's got Netflix money. He's got he's got oh. all kinds of money. And uh, here he is in a picture uh, saying, uh, "Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, Got to cancel these shows." He's uh, here here in an Instagram picture at Stubbs in Austin, and uh, noted millionaire moron Elon Musk, and uh, noted moron podcaster Joe Rogan, and there's Dave yeah. Chappelle in the middle. So there you go. So in case you're curious, uh, yeah, Joe, I, I love the saying that Joe Rogan is a an idiot's an idiot's idea of a smart person. And, uh, <laughs> so if you're looking for something like Joe Rogan, but not a moron, uh, you know, try, try WTF with Marin. Try that. Yeah. Yeah. The thinking man's Rogan. Yeah. Gotcha. Even, even try the Whitney Cummings thing. Good for you. It's mm-hmm. also extra. Okay. It's also way too long, by the way. Like how long are we talking? Here? Uh, Whitney Cummings podcast, uh, sometimes go up to two hours or over. Okay. And it's just with a single guest. Yeah, we we keep it tight here, folks. Oh yeah, we, we try not to waste tight. too much. We try not to waste too much of your time here. Uh, yeah, in, uh, that's my job, by the way. Yeah, yeah, we'll waste your time in person, but not not here on the podcast. And oh. uh, gonna 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 wrap here with my uh, movie review corner here. Oh, it's time for Bill's movie corner. That's a terrible jingle. Uh, yeah, so I. I'm a, I'm a week late on this, but I finally got around to watching Locked Down, starring uh, Anne Hathaway, and I'm going to murder this guy's name. He's really good. Chiwetel. Chiwetel for Is your, yeah. Good for you. Glad glad somebody knows it, because I was not going to get it right. Uh, this uh, also has uh, guest stars like uh, Ben Stiller and Mindy Kaling and Stephen Merchant. And, uh, wow. What it is, uh, they play a, um, a, uh, a married... I don't know. If, I don't know if I ever said they were married, but they're a couple on the outs, and they're living in London, and uh, they were about to break up just as uh, the, the pandemic lockdown hit. So therefore, mm-hmm. they've been stuck in an apartment together for weeks and months and however long, uh, and so it just happens to be a, a a convergence here to where they she works for a uh, major corporation that is involved with Harrods department store. And, uh, he is a delivery driver who, uh, just happens to be charged with, uh, making a delivery of the several items from Harrods, including the, the Harris diamond, the $3 million diamond. And uh, basically after it eventually ends up as a heist, kind of a heist thing, oh, dear. sort of a very, a very small scale version of oceans 11 here. Oceans two, really. And, mm-hmm. uh, you can, you can tell they filmed it literally during this. This was filmed over like 18 days. It says here, and, uh, they filmed it during, during lockdown. And so they're, everybody's doing the distancing and, and 
both Anne Hathaway and uh, say his name for me, please. Chiwetel Ejiofor. Yeah, both have monologues out the ass. There, this is <laughs> there is monologues galore in this thing. And uh, so basically, the, there's a lot of scene chewing to lo- be had. A lot of scenery chewing, and uh, also not a lot of scenery because they don't go a lot of places. They're mostly you're in the you're in the apartment, or you're on the street, or you're at Harrods department store, and that's it. And uh, yeah, if you're if you're a fan of any of these two people, I recommend this. If you have a if you have an aversion to Anne Hathaway, do not come near this. Because it's a lot of Anne Hathaway just yelling at you. Okay, I, I see nothing wrong with any of these statements whatsoever. <laughs> I look, it's Catwoman who is chewing scenery. Okay, there's nothing wrong with this whatsoever. That said, but, it does have some very funny moments. It's just not quite the uh, the slapstick comedy that the trailers make it out to be. It's mostly yeah. mostly uh, pretty depressing and pretty dramatic with a few flashes of comedy here and there so don't go in thinking it's a wacky comedy because it's not it's nothing else uh i would definitely say this this movie and others like it because i know there's a similar one with uh john david washington and zendaya kind of has a similar theme um if nothing else watch these films because it is historic in the fact that this came at a time where People were uh, actors are still trying to use their craft amidst a pandemic. Yeah, and that that if nothing else, watch it with the idea that you're seeing history. Don't watch it because you know it's entertaining. Watch with that eye. Well, it, it is entertaining. It's just uh, it's it's entertaining in a very weird way. If you're going, if you definitely are going and expecting a full on comedy, you're not going to get that. This is on HBO Max, by the way. Okay. That's where that's where you see that the, that place where Wonder Woman 1984 just left. Did did anybody really miss it though? I mean, yeah, a lot of people watched I, it, and a lot of people were uh, somewhat disappointed. Again, it's not the worst thing in the fucking world, kids. No, that would be Aquaman. So, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now, let's be nice to Jason Mimosa here. Hey, he did what he could, but Aquaman sucks. Eh, it's again not that's not the worst thing. That's not the worst <laughs> thing by far. But uh, look, just know that Suicide Squad will be coming soon. The all right? the Suicide Squad. R- oh, well, excuse me, James Gunn's Suicide Squad. Let's yeah, give it that stank. There's also the uh, there's also the. Uh, the uh, the Snyder cut of Suicide Squad that's coming. Uh, I don't know when it's coming, but it's gonna also going to be on HBO Max, and it's going to be a four hour movie. Because ugh, Zack <laughs> Snyder, it's going to be four hours. So oh. on, on, on that uplifting note, let's get out of here. We want to thank <laughs> our uh, sponsor Ogden's Own Distillery and the Five Wives Vodka, amongst other fine sponsors. Why, that would be our good friends at Sugar House Distillery, also Outlaw Distillery, and a Bohemian Brewery that uh, backed up a truck and dumped pallets and pallets of beer in front of uh, the TV Tan Studios. I believe it's all occupying the sixth basement of yeah, the, the TV Tan Podcast the, the entire basement, yeah. Good God. How are you ever going to live, let alone try to get things done at cabledtv.com. I I get it done. <laughs> That's the important thing. I get uh, it done. But, and more importantly, if you're uh if you get a chance if you feel like you want to be fancy as fuck and you want to make that cape sin, but you want the uh the right accoutrements, go visit uh, Boostique and say hello to Ivy in downtown Salt Lake. But again, no matter which distillery or brewery, or a uh, bar accoutrement you want to go to, just wear a fucking mask, okay? Yeah. I also, keep telling you. Also, uh, reach out to us, please, on the Twitter, the Facebook, and the Gmail, all TV Tan Podcast, because we, we, don't, we don't hear much from you. As far as we know, we're just, you know, blathering into a void. Let us know that we're not, or let us know that we are. Either way, I, I just want to know. 
how, how would people let us know we're blathering into a void? I'm, I'm curious how that would work. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's not, so, that's so many not, questions we have to ask. It's our daily. Job yeah. If you're, day. if you're not, if you're not listening to the show, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that would just be hilarious on so many fronts. <laughs> Get all these emails coming in. I am not listening to the show. I was like, Oh, thank you. Okay, cool. <laughs> all right. That's enough. Good night, America. And jiggle that handle. It's time to flush. Hey,